The Bendix MN26 is a direction finder which can be used in some US aircraft and there's three components to it depending on the airplane. You've got a homing indicator, a remote control unit and an azimuth control box which you can only see in the P39 and the A20. The homing indicator tells you how your nose is pointed relative to the station. So a centered needle means you're pointed right at the station, but at maximum deflection it'll indicate if your nose is off 60 degrees left or right. The remote control unit is what tunes the frequency used for direction finding. It'll automatically tune in all airplanes except for the P39, and here you need to use left alt and C to tune the compass frequency in order to use the direction finding feature. The azimuth control box has a needle which will continuously update to where the station is relative to the airplane's nose, so it's showing you how many degrees you need to adjust your heading by to fly directly to the station. So if the needle is on zero, that means the station is right ahead of you. If it's on 180, it means it's behind you. And 090 and 270 will indicate right and left. So you have a look at the P39. Here we can see all three instruments. And when you press left, alt and C, it'll alternate the frequencies that the control unit is going to go through. And uh, when you reach the compass frequency, you'll see that the homing indicator comes alive as well as the control box. Alright, so we're going to start off using the A20 and we're going to figure out how to get to the station. And initially we won't have a good idea of where we are relative to the station. But looking at the control box, we see the needle there is indicating around 100 degrees and to our right. So from our current heading, we'll need to turn around about 100 degrees and then we'll be pointed at the station. So we need our current heading, it's around 290. So if we make a right turn of 100 degrees, that's going to give us a heading of 030. So we'll initiate that turn now, and then we'll just continue the turn and we'll roll out on a heading of around 030, and we'll start also monitoring the homing indicator to see when that needle starts coming alive, and we'll try and keep that needle centered, and hopefully it's going to be around on that initial heading. Alright, so as we start getting within around 20 degrees of a heading, we get prepared to start rolling out. So we're going to roll out, holding about 030, and the needle looks pretty centered as well. So now just a matter of making really small adjustments until we um, get towards the station. And you can also see that the azimuth control box is indicating that it's on zero and that also is telling us that it's directly ahead as well. So now we'll just skip forward in time and we'll look to pass over to the station and what that looks like. So with the Bendix we don't really have a true indication of what range we are from the station. Um, all we can do is rely on um, the two indicators here. So the homing indicator is going to tell us by a full deflection left or right really quickly without us adjusting our heading and the same thing is going to happen with the azimuth control box. That needle is going to swing all the way around and that will tell us that we've gone from being inbound to the station to now being outbound. Now you can see both needles have deflected to the correct positions to show that. Now don't fall into the trap of following that homing indicator needle blindly because if you're not actually receiving a signal from the station this azimuth indicator is going to be rotating constantly searching for the signal and yet the homing indicator is going to show you centered. Alright so on the Russian side of things there's two direction finders modeled. You've got an RPK2 and an RPK10 and just like with the Bendix there's the same kind of three components uh, however the azimuth indicator is actually going to be reversed and we'll look at that in a minute. So this is the homing indicator for the RPK and it works the same way as the Bendix does. This is the frequency control for the RPK, and this automatically handles itself. You don't need to worry about using this at all. This is a back azimuth indicator, and it's showing you the opposite of what you need to get directly to the station. So you need to find the reciprocal in order to determine how many degrees you need to turn. So if it's showing you between 001 and 179, which is the eastern side, you'll add 180. And if it's showing you something on the western side, you'll subtract 180. Okay, so we're flying the P2, and we're going to look at the back azimuth indicator now. And it's sort of creeping towards around 300. So since that's on the western side, we're going to take the reciprocal. So it's going to be 300 minus 180. That'll give us 120 degrees, and that'll be a right-hand turn. So now we'll go back to the cockpit, and we're going to look at our current heading and figure out where we need to go from there. So right now we're on a heading of close to north. So we'll make a right turn now. And we're going to turn to a heading of around uh, 120. And we're also going to make sure we keep an eye on the needle. So we know when the needle comes alive when we're within around 60 degrees of that. And um, 
will roll out on the heading of 120. Alright, see the needle starting to come alive. Getting close to our heading that we want. We can start smoothly beginning to roll the airplane out. And we'll finish off on a heading of around 120. And then it's just a matter of adjusting the heading to keep that needle centered. And if we have a look um, in the gunner position, we'll just change over to that now. We press Control C. Looking down there, we can see that we're approximately on uh, 180, closer to 190, so uh, we can go back to the cockpit and make that 10 degree uh, heading adjustment. There's a little adjustment here. Now we can roll level again, and then uh, we just maintain that needle all the way to the airport. And uh, yeah, we can skip forward in time until we reach that. Alright, so uh, here we can see the airfields underneath this here. And just like with the Bendix, you know, we don't have an indication of range. So we have to rely on looking at that homing indicator for that needle deflection to know uh, when we're actually going to be arriving uh, at the airfield because it'll go from that straight ahead point to the full deflection, telling us we're now on the outbound track away from the uh, station. And so here we can see needles deflecting. We're not adjusting the heading at all, so we know that we're getting uh, pretty much over the top of the station. And if we can get back to the azimuth indicator, you can see that's also beginning its rotation up to the 360 point, where we know the heading is zero, and it tells us that now the station is behind us. Now if you're not receiving the signal from the station, just like with the Bendix, your azimuth indicator is going to be rotating, searching for a signal, and your homing indicator needle is going to stay centered. So I hope this has helped you understand the radio navigation using the US and Russian airplanes a little bit better. If it did, remember to share with your friends and become a subscriber. And if you're interested, I have a new Discord channel and Patreon, which you can find in the video description. But most importantly, remember to fly safe and always check six.